Now that we have all the backend pieces installed, we have Ruby, Ruby Gems, Rails, and MySQL, we need to make sure we have a web server. Now, of course, we need to have a web server when we're in production. When we put our application out on the web, users will type a URL into their browser, which will contact our web server, which will then talk to our Rails application to decide what response or web page it should return to the user. Well, the exact same setup is what we'll use for development as well. We'll have a browser talking to a web server, talking to our Rails application. So the question is, which web server do we use for our development environment? Let's look at some of the possible choices. There's Apache, either version 1 or 2, and there's a lot to recommend Apache. It's the most popular web server, and there's also a piece of software for Apache called Passenger, or sometimes called ModRails, that's an Apache module that lets Apache and Rails communicate. That's a great and very popular combination. I would say that most Rails websites out there in production are using it, but there are others to consider too. There's Nginx. Nginx is a new competitor to Apache with a lot of the same features, which have been gaining very quickly in popularity. Then there's Lighty and Mongrel, which have less of the features of Apache and Nginx, but which are much faster. They're really a lightweight web servers. And then there's Microsoft IIS, which is a popular web server, but doesn't have as much support for Rails as it should. If you decide that you want to go with IIS, if you're really familiar and comfortable with it, you'll want to go to their website for tips on how you can make it work with Rails. And then last of all, there's Webbrick, the web server that almost no one has heard of and it's the one that I'm going to recommend. It's a very simple web server that just does a very simple job of taking a request, asking Rails for the result, and returning it. It doesn't do much more than that. But most importantly, it ships with Rails. It's pre-installed, pre-configured, and couldn't be any easier to use. I still wanted you to know about and see the other choices. You can try them if you want, both for development and for production. But for this tutorial, we'll be sticking with the built-in web brick. And quite honestly, it's probably the one that you'll keep using for development going forward as well.